fishy story here, aren't we? I think we're all starting to understand this is going to be a little fishy today. That's a great fish, too, isn't it? I think we're having steelhead trout tonight for dinner, so that's just making me hungry to see that thing. We're in Mark today. Uh, Mark is a, a very unusual gospel. You've ever read all the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? It's not one for a lot of details. Mark just pretty much tells you the way it is and he goes on. Unlike Luke, Luke seems to be like a, a, a writer who needs to tell you a lot of detail before he goes on. So here in the very first, Mark starts out a little section with a news flash to everybody. John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, is in prison. How did it happen? He didn't tell us, does it? We don't know. He just says he's in prison. Well, guess what? I know what happened, and I think you know what happened too. If you read your scriptures, John, unfortunately, gets involved in politics, doesn't he? He looks around at Herod, he sees what's going on, and he says, I don't like this. This is not what's supposed to be going on. And John decides to take things in his own hands. John goes, starts yelling at Herod, yelling at people that are with Herod, he gets himself in trouble, and he gets arrested. This is what happens to poor John. Now, I think what's interesting here is that Jesus knew what John was doing. Jesus didn't condemn what John was doing. Even though I think Jesus looked at it, and he said, this is politics here, John. You probably need to stay out of this. But he didn't do that, did he? Why? Because Jesus knew this was John's role. This was what John was sent before Jesus to do. Was to shake things up. To start getting people ready for the discipleship. And I think this is why Jesus didn't do anything and allowed John to follow his path. God had a path for John. We all know, unfortunately, what happened. His head ended up on a path. That was kind of a bad thing. So we won't go any further into John, unfortunately, because we know what happened to John. This morning, though, we're going to look at what it means to follow Jesus. We're going to follow in the steps, and especially today, what Jesus said about fishing. After all, he said this was all about fishing. Now, before we go on, I'm going to tell you a little story about a little town that had a rabbi, a priest, and a Methodist minister. These three little synagogue and churches in this little town. And the first Monday of every month, they would go fishing. The three would get together out in their boats and they'd go out and go fishing. Well, unfortunately, like Methodists, the Methodist minister got moved. Yeah. And a new Methodist minister came in. Now, the rabbi and the priest said, hey, let's go over and be nice guys. We'll invite this guy over fishing. So they went over to hey, on the first Monday of every month we go fishing, we'd like you to come. But you need to bring the sandwiches. I'll bring the coffee, the priest will bring the bait. I said, yeah, that sounds fine. So on that first Monday, they all climb in the boat and they go a little bit offshore. And the rabbi says, wait, wait, stop the boat. He says, I forgot the coffee. And the priest says, you want me to go back? He says, no. Jumps out of the boat, runs across the water, gets the coffee and runs back. Of course, the Methodist minister is going, wow. The priest just sits there. And he decides, all right, well, it starts rolling again. They roll just a little bit further, and the Catholic priest says, wait a minute. I forgot the bait. And the rabbi says, you want me to roll back? He says, no, no, no. The priest jumps out. Walks across the water, gets the bait, and walks back. And that's the minister goes, that's incredible. And he doesn't want to be outdone. So he says, wait a minute, I forgot the sandwiches. So he jumps out of the boat and immediately says, boom. <laughs> and the rabbi looked at the priest and said, you didn't tell him about the rocks in the water. <laughs> so let's get into Mark here. And we're going to go into Mark. I'm going to start at uh, 1620. As he, we're talking about Jesus, was going along by the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Immediately. I like that. Immediately. It doesn't mean they sat there and thought about it for a while. These two immediately dropped everything and they started following Jesus. Going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in a boat, bending their nets. Immediately, Jesus called them, and immediately, they left their father, they left their boat, they left their servants in the boat, and they went to follow him. Immediately. Again, 
We have no hesitation here. Now this is a familiar scene, right? We all know about this. <coughs> but the danger with this familiarity is what happened. We could skim through it, because Mark obviously doesn't leave us a lot of information. But he shows us something we already know. So we've been there, we've done it. Just like the statement about John the Baptist being in prison, little information, we know it, been there, done that. And yet, there's a very important part here that we all need to see, that we all need to have fresh in our minds when we start looking at this. If you will notice, when you're reading through the Gospel of Mark, especially through uh, what we were just reading, there's a priority list here that a lot of us miss. There's step one, there's step two, step three, and step four. There are things to do that Jesus needs before he can begin his ministry. And this is why we're not worried about John, because this was John's purpose, to start Jesus' ministry. Jesus, at this point, really hadn't kicked in anything yet. Okay, he was waiting for that sign. Now, in step one, we have the declaration of God the Father that Jesus is the Savior. He's the messenger. He's the one that was sent out. And that's, that's Mark 1, 1 through 11. Now, step two, Jesus spends 40 days preparing for ministry, being tested by Satan. This is the next thing that he needed to do. He needed to be tested, and this is what God did. Step three, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He's proclaiming the gospel. We read 12 and 15. Now we come to step four. He's calling his disciples, and this is what we're going to spend some time on. Calling others to serve with him is the gospel ministry. This is what Jesus was preaching and teaching. And it's important. There's a tremendous sense of purpose in calling all these followers. Jesus calls to Simon, and he calls to Andrew, and immediately, like we said, they follow him. He calls to James, he calls to John, and immediately they follow him. The time has come, Jesus is saying. Come with me, the ministry has begun, we need to move now. It is my time. It's time to start proclaiming, preaching, and teaching. This morning, I'd like us to focus on one statement of Jesus. And to help us keep fresh in our minds, our purpose as a congregation, and as an individual, to help us continue forward to follow Jesus. That statement in verse 17, Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. There are three parts of the statement that can be helpful to all of us. The first is Jesus said, follow me. The disciples followed Jesus. Now, I want you to turn to the person next to you. And I want you to say, we need to follow Jesus. Go ahead. We need to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Oh, I would. <laughs> Listen, there's no game on today. And Chris said, I had a latitude to go as long as I want. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 